Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Purple Rock. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Purple Rock is a kind of dusty purple. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Nimasign Singularity with a fine nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we go to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. And up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. I put a line of ink down. Up first is a chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this purple is really pushing up and not leaving very much behind. We do see the purple come in, but we see the blue all the way across the top, a very nice blue. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And it really looks no different than the other chromatography, making me feel like there's going to be no resistance to this ink whatsoever. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it is to clean from your pen. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself very well. I'm going to call it surprisingly well for me. And what I'm seeing is it does spread, but it doesn't blow out and become unreadable huge plus right here. It makes me feel safe to use it if I had to for note taking, which is very surprising when we look at what happens with water. Water is completely moving this ink off the paper. We see all the way across the water sample and on the right side of the water sample, a lot of the white of the paper, making me say that water is all that you would need to get this out of your pen. Now, pen flush, did everything that water did, but it actually did do a little bit more. We see more of the white of the paper coming through with only 30 seconds of it being there. I don't think you would need the pen flush, but if you did, it certainly takes care of the job. Bleach, as would be expected, completely removes it from the paper, but you have no need to use a one-third bleach solution to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Purple Rock has a viscosity of 1.88, making it a wetter ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Purple Rock has an average dry time of 16 seconds, making it absolutely normal, even though it was a wetter ink. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I pick this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting, though 1.1 gives no feather spread, halo, sheen, no shade. It's a neat dusty purple, but it just, it, it's like it's lacking something through all of these writing samples. The extra fine gives the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The medium gives the exact same tone again with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. I had my mic in the wrong spot. There we go. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get any up here. The smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Tomoe River. This brings out the dusty tone here, and it looks very nice. It has no bleeding. It has some ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread. It has some halo to it. Some nice halo to it on the Tomoe River. Beautiful stuff. No sheen and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1, but no feather spread, and it has halo 
all over it, a beautiful dusty purple with halo on it. And here it is just, wow. All the rest of the writing, all the rest of the papers, I'm like, eh, you know, mm, dusty purple. Just, a, But here it's, wow. 15 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread. It has halo all over. All of it has halo. Tiny halo, tiny little lines all the way around. The gnomes come around and like to outline my work for me. Thank you, garden gnomes. No sheen, no shade, 22 seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't get any, but the scrubby does show that tiny little halo all the way around it. Smear test, you would not be able to recover this. Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The exact same tone as the extra fine. It has no feather spread, or no, the, the extra fine has the exact same tone as the 1.1. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 8 seconds to dry. The medium has the exact same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. In the smear test, you could definitely recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. And this is where things are t interesting to me. Just looking at the tone of this. It's entirely different with this very dry nib. Entirely different. I didn't, like this is, you know, it's eh. It looked good on Rhodia. It was eh everywhere else. But on, the, on a really dry nib, this dusty purple looks great. This is making me want to try the Nemocene as a broad nib to see if it still writes as dry. I may wind up getting one of their, their pens just to get the broad and want to make sure that that's all together. I might order, you know, maybe I just order one of their broad nibs just to see if it stays this dry because this dry with this ink, fantastic. It's got to be amazing. The Monokaki paper. M-O-N-O-K-A-K-I. No bleeding. We do have ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread. Halo sheen. No shade. The extra fine is the exact same tone with no feather spread. Halo sheen and no shade. Seven seconds to dry. The medium is the exact same tone that we see with the 1.1 and the extra fine. It has no feather spread. Halo sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could likely recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Twisby notebooks, one of my favorite notebooks to really use. I like it. The papers don't always give the best results, but I find it very consistent and affordable. No bleeding, minor ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone on this paper. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The medium becomes a darker tone again, just like the 1.1, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. So Moji paper. Love those Japanese papers. No bleeding, no ghosting. This is the scrubby where I put it on stupid thick, like an animal. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter again. With no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Three seconds to dry, super fast. Wow. The medium is a darker tone. It's darker than the 1.1. It's the darkest by far on this page. The medium has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. It looks like there's some in the extra fine on camera, but not in person. The smear test, you could recover this. Oh yeah, you could recover that if you smeared it. That is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's Purple Rock, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Now I did want a very dark black ink to go with this because it's a nice dusty t color. I went with Robert Oster's Green Black because it really comes across as 
black. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Purple Rock? All the way through, all of the writing samples, I did not like the color of this ink. Those pens were a little too wet to bring out some of the character that this ink has. However, when I was taking notes with a fine dry nib, the shading that this ink is capable of really came through. The ink came into its own with a drier nib. So I would suggest using a drier nib to really get some of those beautiful dusty purples that it can have and to bring out its shading. Thanks for watching.